Here we are, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, two things. Number one, I've seen this guy pop up in recommended stuff, like, left and right. What the fuck? And secondly, what you didn't see was, uh, before this, uh, Nick was like, we should all just start this video with our shirts off. And Nate just went, <laughs> all right, pull shirt off. I literally just pulled my shirt off. I didn't care. And I'm just like, terms of service. you never see that. But if you do, then, uh, uh, I guess maybe I forgot to edit it out. Whoopsies. Ar- Ariel, I'll see what I can do. Shut up, Ben. No. Uh, okay. So, anyway, Burt Kreischer, uh, the machine. So, a long time ago, I heard this. I heard about this story. Burt Kreischer actually went on Joe Rogan's podcast and told this story, and uh, and it was very, it was, it was awesome. But he, I think he never made it part of his act until a few years after that. And I will say this. Um, Bert is a very funny guy. Come here. He's, he's a, he's not quite a blue collar comedian. Instead, he's just, uh, like, you know, those frat, you know, those like drunk, you know, those like fat drunken fools you see at frat parties all the time. Yes. Who are just like, I don't know my limit. Uh, (laughs) okay. When you started that, I expected him to say, I don't know my name. No, no, he. Well, Bert's an easy name to remember. Well, no, he, like if, like a guy's so drunk he can't remember his own name. That's what I mean. Okay, fair enough. But Bert uh, was a party boy supreme at uh, FSU, Florida State University. Oh boy! And uh, he was a pa- and still is a power drinker. Well, he doesn't drink as much anymore. Uh, he's yeah, actually, two daughters. Well, he's act- well two daughters, and not only that, but he's cleaned his life up. He's actually actually he started do- uh, doing DDP yoga. Oh, neat. and he's actually doing that to get in shape, and me too. I'm I'm doing that again with my mom, and we're wanting to stick with it this time. We are definitely going to stick with it this time. So, um, anyway, Bert Kreischer, uh, the machine. This is actually something we're just gonna. I haven't told any of the details with this. I don't want to tell any of the details with this. Yeah, like I... all I'm going to say is <laughs> then. You're not ready. I keep seeing this. This dude is like with... a story that, like, when I first heard it, I was like, "This can't be fucking real." Like, I keep seeing this shirtless <laughs> dude with a microphone just like popping up on the recommended videos. I'm like, "What the fuck?" Apparently, the fuck there's been this? some other people that have also confirmed this story to be real. Yeah, uh, actually, it's when, just a good ass story when either he told way. This story it's fucking on, uh, when he told, told the story on Joe Rogan's podcast, he uh, he had his friend uh, John Paul Joyce with him, who is also a comedian. Uh, like him and Bert went into comedy together. Bert blew up, and John still does like circuits and everything. But um, yeah, John uh, corroborated the story and pretty much told it verbatim, word for word, the exact way. Hmm. You know, except you know the parts that he was there for. Oh yeah. But anyway, Bert Kreischer, the machine. Let's get this on screen. <laughs> And uh, let's see what happens. Oh, yeah, basically, like me and Nate are familiar with the machine, but we've had a lot of requests for it, and this is us and showing it to I beer. have no fucking idea what it is, so. All right, so here we go. When I was 22, I got involved with the Russian mafia. Here's how it happened. Oh, Jesus. All right. I went to school at Florida State. I was not a very good student. I was there, uh, like, seven years. I was there in most of the 90s. Ooh. I, I was in college longer than grunge music was around. Ooh. <laughs> so, this is how bad of a student I was. One time, I signed up for a Russian class thinking it was Spanish, and it took three classes before I realized, I don't think this is Spanish. <laughs> So oh, I Jesus. The teacher who was hot, he definitely worked out. <laughs> it was a girl. It was a girl. And she was hot. She still is hot. She stopped me. She goes, don't go anywhere. I need 14 kids to teach this class. You're the 14. I need to teach this class in order to get my master's. So, if you sit back down, you don't have to do anything all semester. I'll just give you a C. I was like, uh, Strauss boots, you bitches. I'm back. <laughs> so I took one, two, three, and four, and four never learned a word. Think about what I'm saying. I took two years of a language, took four semesters of my college career, four, four semesters. Russian four was taught in Russian. Do you have any idea what it's like to go to a class and sit there like an immigrant at the DMV all day? Like, 
<laughs> yeah, I, that's how I imagine it to be. Is like me? No, no, no me? No. Is this the right form? No, that's not the right form. We're taking a trip to Russia. If you go, you'll get a minor. I was like, okay, hold on. Hold on. Are you telling me? I can't really speak, read, write, or understand the language, right? It's just like I'm fucking well aware of that. I was taking I was tests taking test in, a in a language with which I was unfamiliar with their alphabet. Do you have any you have idea any what idea it's like to take, take a test, test and make up and hieroglyphics? hieroglyphics. <laughs> and the answer is star circle hashtag shoe. <laughs> star circle hashtag shoe. Damn it. She goes, it doesn't matter. We need kids to make this trip happen, and if you go with all the classes you've taken and the ones you will take, dude, you will get a minor. And I was like, that's all you had to say. Let's go to Russia and fuck some minors. It's a different, it was different minor, obviously. Learned that the hard way. So we went to Russia in 1995. This is when the oh, mob no. ran everything, and they told us that our very first night. They sat the whole class down. They're like, listen, we have paid off the mafia to keep you safe. In exchange for our money, they give us two young gangsters. I'm in the room like, this trip just got fucking awesome. The word for gangster in Russian is banditi. They go, these banditi are going to live with us. They're going to walk you to class. They're going to walk you back to class. They're going to take you on field trips, walk you back from field trips. Do not speak to them. They're in the mafia. Do not look at them, do not engage them, do not interact with them. I was like, they're going to be my best fucking friends. So the first night I got a bottle of vodka and a six pack of Baltica, which is our local beer, and I planned a sentence. I was going to say, Strasvutsya, Minyasa Gutberg, Ochimbriatna, Yarabota, Yukoshka. Does anyone speak Russian in here? I love that someone says no. No. <laughs> I did a head count earlier. It doesn't look like it. Look like it. <laughs> I'll tell you what that's good. Says. It's a badass sentence. I worked all day on it. Hello, Hello. my name's Bert. My name's it's very Bert. nice to meet you. I work. I work. Pussy. <laughs> kind of. It really means I work with cats. <laughs> I didn't know the fucking language. What do you expect? <laughs> uh, it doesn't matter because the second the door opens and I'm face to face with a real Russian gangster with the white beater and the tattoos with the track pants and the cigarette. And it, he just stares me up and down. A frat boy from Florida State. I was wearing a fanny pack. He <laughs> <laughs> looks at me and goes, stole. I fucking panicked. And everything I had planned on saying flooded out of my head. And all I said to him in Russian in his doorway was, I am the machine. What did you say? I was like, I'm the machine. Yeah, yeah, machino. Somebody tell my friends. Brings me in a room full of nine Russian gangsters drinking and smoking. And just goes, stop. Tell them what you said. Tell them what you said. Now I'm like, fuck it. On the machine! Yeah! <laughs> they looked at me and they're like, fuck it. He's the machine! And these guys love me. He is the machine. You gotta realize, though, the reason they love me is I went shot for shot with them that night, all night long, until like four in the morning. But all I knew how to say in their language was, I'm the machine! And I fuck cats. So, we did everything together. We, uh, like, the guy that answered the door, his name was Igor. He was like my best friend. We did everything together. We ran a pool hall scam. We stole a boat. We stole a boat. the best summer of my life. And then one day, night. the whole class is taking a trip to Moscow. It's an overnight train trip. And I say to you, I go, this is going to be a blast. We're going to be in the same cabin. And he goes, I can't go. I said, why not? And he goes, different mafia runs train, different mafia runs Moscow. I said, well, hold on. What's that mean for me? And he goes, don't worry. I said, I'm banditi. I tell them about you. They'll take care of you. Sure enough, we get to the train station, and he introduces me to my two new gangsters, Igor and Igor. <laughs> <laughs> God no shit, it. like no shit, really. And he says to me, he goes, guys, this is the machine. If you give the machine fuck, you'll have a great time. He looks like a kid on Christmas. He's like, oh, I can't wait to play with a machine. He grabs me, he goes, 
machine does it. Hidden coach. The machine sits in first class with us. I'm like, that's what I'm fucking talking about. Yeah. We go to first class and it is pimped out with booze, food, and here's the real gangster part. Second, the train takes off out of the station. Everyone that works on the train comes in to pay their respects. The conductor walked in. Rips off the stars and stripes to his shirt and places them on my lap and goes, This is a present for the machine. <laughs> it would be an honor to do a shot of vodka with the machine. The machine. Yeah, yeah, machine. I'm 22 years old thinking, oh, these machine stories might have gotten out of control. <laughs> might have. Come on, Bird. You drink machine. all the booze in an hour and Big Eagle stands up and he goes, Machine, you go to the bar card to get more vodka. I'm like, fuck it. I'm the mob. I'll do whatever the fuck I want. <laughs> we roll into the bar like a big dick in a locker room. Just. Not that I've ever been that guy, but I've seen it. <laughs> <laughs> you know the look where everyone looks like, oh shit. Okay. Oh shit, yeah. Oh, no. Uh, oh, someone's here. Okay, all right. <laughs> yeah. Igor looks at me, and in Russian he says, machine, go behind the bar and grab bread. In Russian. In Russian. And I understood him. For a second, I'm like, I'm fucking learning. <laughs> <laughs> my way, not through flashcards and textbooks, but by joining the mafia. I get my Igor, I know what you said. He's like, go for your machine. Can the machine find cheese? And I was like, fear, cheese, I got it. Give me another one. And he's like, grab vodka. I was like, already know that one. Give me another one. He's like, grab the money. I'm like, huh? Huh? He goes, grab the fucking money. And I realized at that instant, uh, we're robbing the bar cart. And I'm the one doing it, hooked on phonics style. <laughs> <laughs> I grab the money, walk out. Two of my classmates see me, and they're like, you're in so much trouble. Go back to our first class cabinet within five minutes. The head chaperone of this train trip, not the whole trip, just this train trip. She was an English teacher who did not speak Russian, who hated me oh, no. before I robbed the train. Oh she no. She comes over to our first class cabin and swings the door open with that like liberal arts confidence. Just. <laughs> this shit is over. You're done. You're done. Stand up right now. You you stand up. Stand up. Help. Help. You're done. Stand up. And Big Igor looks at me confused, then smiles, takes a big sip of vodka, spits it in her eyes, and goes, No one talks to the machine like that. <laughs> Fuck that bitch, this is Russia. Fuck that bitch, this is Russia. Yes. Oh, no. When it gets dark, we have a good time. Like, what the fuck are we doing when it gets dark? See, here's the thing, he's still alive. He's out of ring of keys and he goes, we're robbing the whole fucking train. I'm a good person. I don't cheat. I don't cheat. This is why. I, let me tell you. I don't cheat on my wife. I don't cheat on my wife because one morning our whole family was in bed. The dogs, the cats, the girls, my wife, and we were just giggling, and it was pure. It was perfect. And I, don't, I thought to myself, I don't ever want to screw this up. This is the most important thing. This is what it's life's about. And they got up to make chocolate chip pancakes, and I laid in bed and I said, I will never cheat on my wife. I had a conversation with myself. I said, if I ever get into a situation where a hot girl is flirting with me, or I think she's flirting with me, and it seems like it could go further, I'm just gonna cock block myself. I'm just going to look her in the face in front of everyone and go, I don't cheat on my wife! <laughs> now, I may be wrong. She may not be hitting on me. <laughs> I don't cheat she on my wife. She may throw a drink in my face, slap me. Or I may be right. I, none of that matters to me. What matters to me is that I don't cheat on my wife because I've already had that conversation. Here's the problem. I never had that conversation about robbing trains. <laughs> Here it is. <laughs> the opportunity, I thought I'd be like, not me. I'm going to go back and work on my verbs. <laughs> but apparently, when presented the opportunity, I'm the guy that's like, fuck it, let's start with my class. <laughs> time, for, time for some thrilling heroics. <laughs> While they slept, if that makes it better, it doesn't. We the whole train. <laughs> if any consolation, we robbed me too. My bag was with them. We and robbed we me too. Drank all night long. All night long. Like, literally. <laughs> Until 6 in the morning. Top 5 drunkest I've ever been without throwing up in my entire life. We pull into Moscow at 6 a.m. I'm piss drunk. You ever been so drunk, you're like, I know I got a piss, but I can't buy my dick. <laughs> 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 
Sun's up. I'm hammered. Door opens. Same teacher. Not mad. Curious, right? <laughs> she looks me in the eyes, smiling, and goes, I want to be the one to tell you they've alerted the police. And I look out, and on the platform, my whole class is standing over the cop, talking. They're upset. They've been robbed. I get it. <laughs> Apparently, they've never heard snitches get stitches. Oh, boy. Pinky Gore sees this and is completely unfazed. He's like, don't worry. I talked to police for both of us. I was like, oh, thank God. He cracks a bottle of vodka. I'm like, oh, I wouldn't bring that out to an officer, maybe. <laughs> Lights a cigarette, walks out to the cop, who's taking a statement. The cop is taking a statement. Igor walks up behind him, grabs him by the arm, spins him around, and goes, fuck you. We fuck you in the mouth. We fuck you in the ass. We, I'm like, stop with the fucking we shit. <laughs> Now the cop is just staring at me, and I hear him bark out, "Hi, do him, good day, good day," which I don't even know what that means, but it doesn't sound like you're okay, stay there. <laughs> oh, it is no. a come to Jesus moment where you know you fucked up. All I thought as I walked to the cop, who's standing in front of the class, I just robbed. Next to the gangster, I robbed them with. My only thought was, this isn't how I plan on spending my second junior year. <laughs> and the gulag taking hot dicks to the throat. <laughs> I get five Too steps long. from the cop, who looks impatient as shit. He takes two big ass steps, grabs me by the arm, spins me away from my class, away from Igor, pulls me right into his face, and he goes, So, so, I understand you're the machine. I'm the machine. What the fuck? To let you fucking I was like, what? He's like, tonight you party with us, yes? And I looked at him and I was like, wait, I'm not in trouble. You're not mad. And he gets so close to me, I can smell his morning cigarette. And he goes, no. Fuck that bitch. This is Russia. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Ladies and gentlemen, Bert Kreischer. I'm machine. I am the machine. Yeah, yeah, machino. <laughs> so, yeah. Bert Kreischer, <laughs> a very funny guy with a hell of a story right there, man. <laughs> I, I how, swear. How did, how did he live? This is Russia. It's like, because it, it, it was Russia. And he's and, the machine. And yeah. <laughs> he's the machine. Well, here's one thing I've, like, I've heard people explain this. It's just like, Russians, they don't care if you don't, if you don't speak their language. There's just two things you don't do. Number one, don't steal their vodka. Number two, don't steal their women. And number three, if you manage to outdrink them, they will respect you enough to let you live. Uh, or at least keep up with them on drinking. And, or at least keep up with them, yeah. And number four, don't remind them that they said there were only two things. Yes. <laughs> uh, sorry about that. I meant, to say, I meant to say like I meant to say like three or a few things. A few things. Yeah. No, nah, it's fine. <laughs> oh boy. So yeah, Burt Kreischer. Um, that's that's one of those moments where it's just like, all right, I'm just gonna fly by the seat of my pants and see what happens. Oh hey, the seat of my pants brought me in front of this cop. Oh my god, the seat of my pants is saying that this cop is wanting to party with me because I'm the machine. Yeah. <laughs> what the fuck? Yeah, and well, Burt has other stuff that he's done, but just. Everyone knows him as the machine. Like, he just, he forgets everything he's going to say, and all he can say to them is, in Russian, I am, I am the, the machine. machine. Yeah, yeah, machino. Which, I mean, if you had some guy show up, like, you know, say, like, somebody from, you know, another country, and, like, you were, like, you know, partying and stuff, and they just knock on your door and stuff, and you open it up, and you're like, what's up? Like, what they're just like, I'm the machine. I'm sorry. Think Sam. about how you <laughs> you'd react the same fucking way. You'd be like, I just, I just he's the machine. Well, apparently. Well, I just be like, I just be like, it's, it, like I'd be standing there, and like, oh, like if if it was like at one of the frat parties as I was at, like at like at at Pi Lamb, it would have gotten nuts. But at like Pi Kappa, if like if one of the brothers would have opened the door, and if, like him standing there with a bottle of vodka and a and a pack of beer, and he'd just be like, I am here to party. I am Big Dick Johnson. 
<laughs> and then all like... of a, and then all of a sudden, uh, all of a sudden, they're just like, wait, you, the White Big House? Dick Johnson. And he's like, duh, I am Big Dick Johnson, duh. And then, <laughs> and then all of a sudden, they'll just be like, they'll see the vodka, they'll see the beer, and they'll just be like, fuck it, he's Big Dick Johnson. And they, they'll bring him in, and it's like. It's like everybody, everybody. This is my Russian friend, Big Dick Johnson. And then, I'll, and then it just and like everyone is just like, it's like, hey, hey, Big Dick Johnson, want to do a shot? And it'll just be like, da, Big Dick Johnson, the shot. <laughs> <laughs> no, I could just picture this moment of like, you know, we're just sitting here recording, minding our own business. Doorbell rings, and by God, we would know it because that doorbell's real irritating. Bing, bong, bing, that doorbell. That doorbell goes on for a full, like, 30 fucking seconds. Hey, it, there's one thing I will say. You know someone's at the door. Boy, howdy, <laughs> don't you? Yeah. I've so, ran into that a few times. So, you know, you walk up, you open the door. Mm-hmm. And there's just... I don't know, you're standing there. There's this Japanese guy just standing there. <laughs> yes. Oh, God. He has a bottle of Jägermeister. He has a bottle of Jaeger. And he a looks pack of Miller. He looks bewildered. And all he can say to you is I'm I am Larry. That's all he can say. If he just said I'm Larry, I don't think I would be as convinced. I'm like it'd have to be something like, you know, no. profound like I'm the machine, like Well, for him, for him I think he would say I think he would say He'd probably just be He's like, like, I am the unstoppable force. No, it, it, no for, him, <laughs> for him, you know what it would be? He'd be like, he'd like, hello, I am Dr. Bonsai. I'm like, <laughs> like Dr. Bonsai. He'd just, I'd be like, Dr. Bonsai? He'd be like, Bonsai! Bonsai! Glug, glug, glug. And I'd just be like, fuck it, Dr. Bonsai. And it's just like. <laughs> I'll be like, let me get my anger from upstairs. Uh, come on. It's in. like, <laughs> all right, you guys, you guys entertain this gentleman. I'm going to call the police and see if we can get this sorted out. <laughs> Hello. I'd be like, Bonsai. you do not call the police. Hello, call police. The police. Do you you will respect Dr. Bonsai. He's a guest in our household. Do you have anyone that speaks Japanese? I could use a translator very badly. There's and now a... all of a sudden we call up Mike's grandmother. I would just be like, konnichiwa, Dr. Bonsai. Come yeah. in, come in. We call up Mike's grandmother and, yeah. and and we're just like, excuse me, like, man. Hey, can, Micah... you, can you try and talk to this man for us? <laughs> I'd have got the, this, this little, nice. like, this little... She's like four foot six. She's precious. Mike's grandmother is just this tiny little Japanese lady. She is... Precious. She's more American than I am, though. I mean, she loves the Atlanta Braves. She loves her. She loves her cheeseburgers and and, uh, <laughs> and the groundhogs in her garden get shot. Yes, oh. a lot by Micah. Poor yes. groundhogs. Have, have you heard the story of Lucifer? I like the little uh-huh, ground Lucifer. Piggies. So, uh, the story of Lucifer. This is a good story. You're gonna like Lucifer it. the groundhog. So. Micah's grandmother had been dealing with this one groundhog, this one very pesky groundhog, for a while. It was so bad she had taken to calling him Lucifer. <laughs> um, and Micah went over there, and Micah's grandmother takes him aside and says, I need you to kill that groundhog. <laughs> and Micah's like, <sighs> all right. Micah goes outside. He finds this groundhog just completely bold. Just sitting there, just eating. Just mid- chilling. Broad, broad daylight, just eating. <laughs> he looks at Groundhog in the face. Groundhog looks at him. He reaches for one nineteen eleven. Takes it out. Puts it in his other hand. Throws it to the Groundhog. <laughs> the Groundhog looks at it. Looks up at him. Looks at it. Looks up at him. Micah takes out the other 1911 and shoots him. <laughs> Micah thereby states, it was a fair fight. He was armed same as I was. I gave him, he gave him the opportunity. I gave him the opportunity. <laughs> he didn't take it. It's, uh, it's hilarious. pretty fantastic. That's, yeah, I remember that story. Yep. So. That's, that's like a Jerry Clower groundhog story where, uh, oh, his, yeah. where his cousin Marcel pours so much gasoline down the, down the gopher hole. And then they light it up, but they don't realize that, oh shit, there's an exit hole right underneath us that they didn't see. And as soon as they ignite it, 
fire comes up and burns Marcel's ass. You got fire <laughs> and, and my hole. hole. Yeah. And on that bombshell, it's time to end. Thank you very much for watching whatever the hell this turned out to be. Good night. I'm the machine!